friends, welcome back to another episode of Dr. Arya's Vlogs. Today, in this lecture, I would like to discuss some principles and objectives of immersion making. First of all, let's talk about some principles. An impression must adhere to the following principles. So, the various principles are, there must be healthy tissues before impression making. Proper space should be provided for selected impression material. Tray as well as the impression material should be dimensionally stable. For correct positioning of the tray, a guiding mechanism should be provided. Impression should be adequately extended to include the entire basal seat area as dictated by limiting and supporting structures. A border molding must be performed in harmony with anatomical and physiological limitations of the oral structures. Impression must be removed without damage to the oral structures and the tissue surface of the impression and intaglio surface of the denture must coincide. So, these are the various principles of impression making. Okay, that is all about the principles of impression making. Let's talk about some objectives of impression making. An impression should be made with the purpose of obtaining some characteristics in the dentures to be fabricated. It can be remembered as word press. What does this press mean? P for preservation of remaining structures, R for retention, E for aesthetics, S for stability and another S for support. First one is preservation of remaining structures. According to Muller Divan in 1952, he stated that the preservation of that which remains is of utmost importance and not the meticulous replacement of that which has been lost. So that is preservation of remaining oral structures is vitally important to the long term success of the denture. Accurate impressions using a selective pressure impression technique that places pressure only on stress bearing areas is important for the preservation. So, preservation of what is remaining is more important than the meticulous replacement of what is lost according to Divan. Okay. So, that is about the preservation of remaining structures. So, coming to the retention. According to glossary of prosthodontic terms 9th edition, it is defined as the quality and inherent in the dental prosthesis acting to resist the forces of dislodgement along the path of placement. So, here it resists the forces of dislodgement along the path of placement. So, which are the factors affecting retention? They are anatomical factors, physiological factors, physical factors, mechanical factors and muscular factors. So, these will be built separately in further episodes. Coming to the third one, that is aesthetics. Aesthetics is one of the prime concerns of the patient in the complete denture treatment. The thickness of the denture flanges is one of the important factors that govern aesthetics. Thicker denture flanges are preferred in long-term dangerous patients to give the required mouth fullness. Impression should perfectly reproduce the width and the height of the entire sulcus for the proper fabrication of the flanges. A neutral design impression can also be made to reproduce the required contours of the buccal flanges. So, the next objective is stability. According to Glossary of Prosthodontics Terms 9th edition, it is defined as the quality of a complete or removable partial denture to be firm steady or constant to resist displacement by functional horizontal or rotational stresses and it is the ability of danger to withstand horizontal forces and the various factors affecting stability are vertical height of the residual ridge quality of the soft tissue covering the ridge quality of the impression occlusal rims arrangement of teeth and contour of the polished surfaces this will be also dipped in the further episodes. So, coming to the last objective that is support. According to GPT-9, support is defined as the resistance to vertical forces of mastication 
occlusal forces and other forces applied in a direction towards the denture bearing area. In order to provide good support, the denture base should cover as much denture bearing area as possible. And this helps to distribute forces over a wide area. And this ability of the denture to distribute forces over wide areas due to increase in the denture based area is termed as snowshoe effect. In this picture, it shows snowshoe effect. That is, it helps to distribute forces over a wide area. This arrow mark shows. Okay. Thus, the force per unit area is reduced. Confining the occlusal forces to stress bearing areas and relieving the non-stress bearing areas will aid to improve support. That's all for today's episode. In the next lecture, we will discuss about retention in complete denture. Thanks for watching. Please do share and subscribe for more videos.